Hello, hello, this is Mortician. I am back after a bit of a hiatus, but I'm hoping to get back to recording games more often now. Um, I've had to put Time of Light on the back burner, that one got a little too real, but um, we are back with Rain Daddy. Um, I enjoy visual novels and dating sims, so we're going to maybe do a couple of those for a while. So here we are with Dream Daddy. Check my... Alright, we're going to do a new game. So you get to see it from the beginning. I'm going to build a dad and go from there. Snoring noises. Dad. Dad, wake up. Um, I'll do the tried and true method of pretending to be dead. I let my tongue roll out of my mouth and stop breathing. Amanda shakes me. Come on, Dad. This hasn't worked on me since I was six. I'm sorry, Amanda. It's the end for me. Dad, I swear to God. Amanda, I bequeath to you all my earthly positions. Spread my ashes over my recliner. Okay, well, your corpse better get into the moving van because it's leaving soon. No. <sighs> I finally open my eyes and sit up. I'm lying in the middle of the living room, spooning a moving box. I yawn and stretch. Morning, Manda Panda. Dad! Yikes, dad breath. Go brush your teeth. Build that day. Okay. Uh, this is kind of a weird. I don't know. Um, the the way you can build your dad is kind of off from the way a lot of the other characters look. I mean, like his eyes, for example. Um, so. Muscular and a little too hairy. Um, we're gonna go with Trans Dad. Take a binder bod. Um, gonna do a, a skinny looking dad because that's what I'm feeling right now. Pointy chin. Hair, yes. I'm gonna do a surfer dude look. Um, tail. I'm gonna dig the shaggy look. We could do go Super Saiyan if we wanted to, but um, I'd feel uh, obligated to be a blonde. Kind of, kind of digging the purple hair. I, mean, I have purple hair in real life, so, you know, obviously I like it. Oh, uh, let's do the short, shaggy, long hair. I like that. Eyes. Okay, so those are ten, ten eyes. just like don't I mean like that and the tin tin eyes the, the heart eyes just are not in keeping with the rest of the the characters um, style drawing style so I feel a little weird picking them And that, 
that. That's just odd. And, uh, Goku eyes, if you want to keep going my whole, whole uh, the whole uh, Super Saiyan thing. Um, I think I'm kind of liking the downturned eyes. Looks a little sardonic. This is Greek Lock. I do kind of like a little, little pointy anime nose, though. That. And my personal favorite is that kitty mouth right here. So you can do various um, mouths with various uh, color patterns, too. Dad look evil? I can't tell. I think he's just looking kind of, you know, cool. Okay, so we want facial hair. Creepy stash. That's an app description. Little beard. Handlebar. Horseshoe. Porn stash. Yeah, that's a porn, porn stash, I think. Um, now you can up here do a 5 o'clock shadow with the uh, head. So, that's the glasses! I kind of like glasses on guys. I think it tends to just look good. Vintage burn. Pilot glasses. So I can make, um, Father Joseph from Far Cry 5 if I wanted to. That's kind of tempting. Do we have a man bun? We have a man bun. Oh yeah. What looks like Maybe the five o'clock shadow is gonna be the, the best bet here. We'll see. No, I think we got that good.
Sarah Joseph was always a snappy dresser. Oh, nope, 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 that was perfect. That's perfect. Father Joseph. Name that dad. That dad. Yep, Father Joseph. Did you fall asleep packing? Obviously, a lighter, softer version of Father Joseph, but I'm I'm pretty pleased. I got most of it done, I think. Searching around the room, it looks like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except for one. Wait, straggler. Hmm. What's in it? Looking into the box, I see a bunch of old photos and little photo albums. Yes! Whoa, I haven't seen these in years. I pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile and we begin looking through it. That's the coolest baby I've ever seen. Uh, I guess since I switched back to a cis male, um... I'm gonna wrap my uh, bisexual uh, brothers and sisters. The only way your mother and I could get you to stop crying was to put the sunglasses on you. But whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. You spent the first two years of your life with sunglasses on. Nice. Halloween when you're maybe four? Uh, oh my god, that dragon costume. You couldn't decide being a princess between being a princess or a dragon, so you went with both. Princess Dragon. Hmm? Why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? You saw yourself in the mirror and realized you were afraid of dragons. Seeing yourself in the dra inside the dragon's mouth was a realization of your greatest fear, I think. <clears throat> Alright, yep, definitely repress that memory. This was you and you in your horse phase. I think a lot of us who grew up as female, assigned female at birth, um, female coded people had a horse phase at around that age. I know I did. Um, I don't know what it is. Just girls and their horses is kind of, was kind of a thing. I, I know a lot of my friends went through that too. And hell, I still love my little pony, so. Oh. Dad. I believe you may named that horse plush horse Sir Horsington the Brave. Oh no. I don't think that was his... Amanda lunges for the photo, but I quickly snatch it away and hold it above her head with my superior dad arms. Nice try, but this is important blackmail for later down the road. Nah. Go ahead and try me. I've seen pictures of you and your ska band. Ouch, kid. Ah. The Communist Manifesto had a chance back in the day. Maybe? Um, I'd look off into the distance and reminisce about that red horn section. Hey, it's Emma P. Dad. No, Dad, that's Emma R. I didn't meet Emma P until high school. Honey, I promise you wholeheartedly that I will never stop mixing those two up. Dad. Dad. Emma R has been my best friend since I was seven. Give it like a little bit of effort. Oh right, Emma P was the one who... Um... I do like the idea of this one. Lighter fluid, tennis ball, tennis racket, right? <laughs> Dad, that was you. Yeah, it sounds like me. Oh right, I was a wild child. I was six when you did it. 
Okay, Amanda, I was naming for the police station, and just happened there was a police station in the vicinity of where I wanted to hit a flaming tennis ball. Happens all the time. Ugh. Yeah, I remember you explaining that to the police. They didn't believe me either. Oh. Anyway, I gotta show this to Emma R later. She'll get a kick out of it. The first photography award you ever won. <laughs> yeah, and it got us a $20 gift card to McFridays. <laughs> and then you got food poisoning from a cheesy tostada blast. I think you mean food poisoning, you know, with a Z? Ugh. Sad. Still can't drive past Miss Fridays without gagging. Ah. Still proud of you, though. Amanda reaches deep down in the box and pulls out one last photo. Mm -hmm. Neither of us say a word. We stare at the photo for a long moment. Ah. I finally decide to break the silence. It was the day you were born. It's kind of a funny story. I got into a car accident right there at the hospital parking lot. It wasn't anything big, just a thunderbender. Of course, I was freaking out, and the little lady who crashed into us was freaking out, and I didn't know what to do. But your mother, oh man. She holds my hand and looks me directly in the eyes. Almost I've ever seen her. She says, it's okay. It's all going to be okay. Um. She's right, you know. I stare at the picture for longer. Maybe too long. I miss her. I can't even imagine what it must be like for Amanda. Eh? She pats me on the back. Aww. Ah. Come on, Pops. We gotta finish packing. The moving van won't wait forever. You're right. Eh? Amanda and I pile in the car and take one last look at the old house. So many memories here. Hard to believe your mother and I bought this place almost 20 years ago. Uh? Hey, remember when I shattered the front window playing catch? You always had a very strong arms. Hey. Hey, remember when I shattered the other front window playing pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? You're a very imaginative child. <laughs> hey, you remember when I broke the back window? We get it, Amanda. You break stuff. Oh. And there'll be plenty more stuff for me to break in the new place. Memories to make and stuff to break. Huh. You ready? We sit in silence for a moment. I watch my daughter grow up in this house. They'll forever hold the place in my heart, but it stings a little bit to leave it behind. I'm ready. The moving van begins to pull away and I get the car into position to follow. I watch our house, our old house, disappear in the rearview mirror. So... So what? Hmm. So, sell me on our cool new pad. I clear my throat and do my best cheesy announcer voice. Nestled in beautiful scenic downtown Maple Bay, our new house features... I'm, I'm, I'm kind of inclined to go with the multiple places to sleep, because that's awesome. Not only are there bedrooms for your sleeping pleasure, but couches and floor space where you can, yes, catch a wink. Yeah. What a deal, I mean, if sleep weren't for the week. You sleep more than anyone I know. Hmm. I admit my fault, Bobs. I keep it real. Anyway, it's also smaller than our last house. Hey. Cozier, one might argue. Good spin. Hey! I think it's great. Won't we be closer to a lot of cool stuff that we can walk to? So I don't have to waste gas, and I mean, trying to park downtown is, you know. Amanda, you know you're going to have to learn how to parallel park at some point, right? Hmm. Not going to have pops. I think someone needs to do a three-point turn on their attitude. Ah. I don't know how to do that either. Have you met the neighbors yet? Not yet, but the neighborhood seems pretty quiet. Hmm. So you won't have to chase any ratty teens off your lawn? You are the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. Mm -hmm. I'm in my last year of high school. I'm practically dust. Yeah, you're a real... Mm -hmm. Don't you dare. Senior... <sighs> yeah, 
I don't know where this is going. Citizen? Hmm. I'm just gonna ignore that. Huh. But I won't forget it. So what's item number one on the new house agenda? Well, first we'll need to forge a path through the solid wall of boxes that's blocking the living room. I still have to install a washer and dryer. We need to go grocery shopping. Hmm? Pops, cool your jets. You have to promise me that we're going to take a break and explore the neighborhood. Okay, okay, you're right. We'll get some work done and then check the area out. Pull up to the new house and step outside. That's a very pink house. The lawn is freshly mown and the for sale sign is still in the yard. Ha! Yeah! And with a swift kick from Amanda, the for sale sign is no more. Nice form, sweet pea. I got a problem with authority. Don't we all? I'm so proud. Man, all that karate chopping tuckered me out. I could really go for a sandwich. An ice cream sandwich. Sweetie, it's 10 a.m. I'm gonna go for coffee. Coffee is good. I'm gonna get my hands on a nice hot cup cup of the old bean juice or I'm going to be useless all day. I think we passed a coffee shop on the way here. Maybe we can check that out. Let's do it. Huh. Walk down the street to the coffee spoon, a cute little place on the corner. Yeah! Man, this isn't such a convenient walking distance from our place. I mean, I guess. Mm. What's wrong? Why would I go somewhere else and drink coffee on a couch when I could drink co better coffee at home on my own couch and not have to make awkward eye contact with other people? At least when I'm home, some random guy isn't going to come up and sit on the recliner next to me and I won't feel like a little weird about it because technically he's not sitting at my table, but he is very much within my personal zone. Hmm. Bad? What's the etiquette when you have a dirty mug? Is there a bin? Do you go set it up on the counter because you don't know where else to put it? Or do you leave it there and feel your face flush hot with shame as you consider the possibility that there is in fact a bin somewhere out just out of sight and now you're that jerk who left their mug? Aww. Dad, are you just afraid to meet new people? Yes, Amanda. We walk inside. Hey. Oh, hello. The inside of the coffee shop is incredibly warm and inviting. Yeah, it's warm and inviting, all right. Vinyl rec records line the walls and patrons lounge around on the well-worn-in couches. Some cool tunes spin on a record player next to a little stage. Hey. Welcome to the Coffee Spoon. How's it going? Better now. What's with the name? Oh. Oh, what's, uh, it's kind of dumb. It gets mentioned in this point in my life, and I thought it was a good idea at the time. I suppose now it's sort of still a good idea because, like, the business is still running. Mm. But people ask me that question all the time, and they give this the same answer every time. And now I'm standing here rambling, and I'm sure we're all getting more and more uncomfortable the more I keep talking. But man, we're in it now, and I can't stop. Hey. Mm. So, what'll it be? Scan the chalkboard menu and I'm immediately overwhelmed. I'll have a... Man, all of those are really good. Um... We've got Deont Word, Tegan and Sarah, and Godspeed, You Black Emperor. Um... We're gonna have to go with the Godspeed, You Black coffee because that's amazing. <laughs> the classic. I don't get it. Oh my god, you dork, Joseph. Oh, it's a pun. God's Fleet, You Black Emperor is a really amazing and influential progressive rock band known for their sweeping soundscapes and hey. just general awesomeness. I'm doing the thing again. Hey. But coming right up. Hmm. And for you? I'll have a macchiato to Marco, please. Hey. Coming right up. You want that small, medium, or biggie small? That's cute. Uh, medium. <laughs> Wait, is Biggie Smalls big or small? Uh, I should change that, shouldn't I? Oh, no, it's, it's perfectly 
It's perfectly cromulent, and I understood it. Matt's upset to make our drinks, and Amanda and I take a seat on one of the couches. What's his deal? Let the man make his pun. They're cooler bands than you listen to, anyway. Ouch. Hey. Hey. Scott was cool once. This couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than our couch, but it's alright. Good lumbar support. You sink right into it. Okay, it's comfier than our couch. Amanda nudges me. Huh. This place is right next to our house, and that guy seems not only cool, but also just as uncomfortable with talking to other people as you are. You should totally become friends with him. I don't know. One of those chocolate croissants is in the side. We got this. Come on. What do we say about meeting new people? I can't meet new people if I always stay inside and also don't go outside and don't talk to people? Huh. See? We're making progress. Matt sets her drinks down at her table and I immediately burn the roof of my mouth. But I got the iced tea and sugar, Sarah. Good one. Huh. Hey, we're new in the neighborhood. I'm Amanda and this is my dad, Joseph. Hey, yeah. Uh, oh, right on. Pleased to meet you both. Hey. You ought to come by when my daughter is hanging around in the shop. You two might get along. Yeah, I'm sure we'll maybe come in from time to time. Amanda kicks my leg from under the table. I'm sure we'll be in here a lot. Hey! You know what? Let me get you guys' opinion on something. I like giving my opinions on things. Matt goes in the back and comes out with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. Hey. I'm working on a new banana bread recipe, and I need help coming up with a name for it. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I think we're going to have to taste test first, so we can uh, get the full flavor profile of you, you know, and really appreciate the flavor sensations of... Amanda nods vigorously. She knows this game. Yeah, we need to give that banana bread a taste if you want us doing free creative labor. I think that would be comm commensurate with, a. Uh, taught her well. We have trained for this day. I was just going to give you guys free banana bread anyway. Right, yes, that. Matt serves us each piece. Amanda and I happily chow down. Yeah! This is amazing! Hey. Thanks! The secret ingredient is bananas. Hmm. So, any ideas? I'm stumped. Well, I think I might only be able to give you dad band puns, but I'll give it a shot. Let's see. Dead Kennedy's Grateful Banana Bread. Right said banana bread. <sighs> I'm going to be an old person here. Because you got to go with the dead. Mm. Like the jam rock band fronted by Jerry Garcia. If you heard that crash, that was um, one of my cats being naughty. Oh. That it actually has a nice ring to it. Really? Hey. Yeah. Grateful banana bread. Strong decisions. That's art, baby. Hey. I wanted to say baby because I thought it would sound cool, but once I said it, I realized that it just doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth. And maybe I should just leave saying baby to the professionals. Enjoy your coffee. Thanks, baby. Hey. See? That's good when you say it. Don't think I'm surprised. Across the way, a man catches my eye. He sits by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. Our eyes meet just for a moment. Wow, he looks like he would cut you. I want to date him. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. Who is that? I bet we're gonna find out. We finish up our drinks and head out. Hey. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Okay, now that we're full of caffeine, where to? Uh, let's see. Full of caffeine, we probably shouldn't uh, ruin with a nap. We should 
probably unpack. Getting some fresh air will probably lead them running into more people. But let's get back to unpacking. Let's be responsible. I got a lot on my plate right now. Did you know no moving is one of the biggest sources of stress for adults? Joseph is right. Moving sucks. Moving sucks worse than anything I know. Is it right behind the constant fear that you smell bad and everybody's too polite to tell you? Probably. Do I smell bad? Amanda gives me a whiff. You're fine, Pops. Let's go home. I get to work on packing the various boxes around the living room. A couple hours pass and we get some of the work done. Washer dryer unit is both washing and drying, and we can actually walk through the living room without tripping over boxes. First visitor already? I'll walk over to the door and open it. Hello! Oh. A handsome, clean cut man stands at my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. He makes me nervous. I don't know why. Hello? Whoa. Oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next door neighbor. Your name is Joseph? My name is Joseph, too. We should hang out. Oh, yes. Hi, I'm Joseph. That's what my name is. Oh. I saw the moving van and I thought I'd bring over some cookies. My daughter Christy wanted me to let you know she baked them herself. Joseph leans in and whispers. Yeah. Between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. <laughs> we both share a laugh. Kids, right? Yeah. Wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. <laughs> well, thanks for the cookies. Oh, cracker boots. Amanda disappears with the cookies. Mm. Amanda cup butt, and she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She's a charmer. Oh. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. <laughs> Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean, it has to be something wrong with you to try to raise more than two. Uh. I have four kids. Well, we just fucked up. What have you done? Oh. Uh, I meant... Oh. Don't worry. You didn't mean to be rude. Oh no. This is the first neighbor I've met, and my social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Huh? Is the missus around? No, not anymore. She died. Uh. Oh. Uh. Uh. I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's alright. Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we both made things. Mm. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? I look at Joseph quizzically, but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door. Opening it, I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Oh. Hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise not to talk about your dead spouse this time. I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What do you say, pal? Oh. That sounds great. My daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is a perfectly a normal amount of children to have. We shake hands to seal the deal. Eh. Well, neighbor, I'll see you at 3 p.m. sharp on Saturday. I have no idea what day it is. Sure thing, neighbor. Jessa starts walking away but stops to think a second and turns around. Yeah, uh, hey, um, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about stuff, I'm the youth minister at a church down the street. Oh, I don't know, I wouldn't really make, consider myself a youth. Wink. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. Did he actually say wink? I don't know about this guy, man. Now with that, Joseph's gone. He seem nice. Amanda walks back into the living room, crumbs on her face, and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recover I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. <laughs> See, you're already fitting in great. Where'd those cookies go? Um. They're gone. I'm sorry. <laughs> it makes you feel any better. They weren't very good. So you ate all of them anyway? <laughs> 
guess that makes it break time. Any ideas? It'd be weird to go right back to other Joseph's place, so let's go get some fresh air. Let's hit the park down the road. I saw a ton of dogs there when we drove past. Okay, will you help me steal a dog? Yes. The last time I can't fit a dog into the pockets of my cargo shorts, it's physically impossible. <laughs> You're breaking my heart, Pops. I always bring a war chest. What is a war chest? Amanda and I begin to stroll through the neighborhood. I can't believe how beautiful it is outside. Kids are playing in the street, the flowers are in blo bloom, the faint, faint smell of a nearby barbecue drifts through the air. This place is nice. Hmm. Too nice. I don't trust it. Good eye, honey. You can never be too careful. See that baby in the stroller over there? Government operative. Hmm. We're on to you, baby. <laughs> we walk for a while and eventually end up at a small park. Toddlers chase each other through the playground and dogs of all shapes and sizes romp through the grass. It's pretty crowded, but Amanda's not spots a nice empty bench. We start to make our way over to it when... Heads up! Ow! Frisbee suddenly hits me in the face. Woof! A corgi! Oh, is that a corgi! A corgi with a neat plaid handkerchief tied around its neck bounds up to me, wagging its tail. Did you throw this thing at my head, puppy? Woof! Runs around in a circle and nudges my leg with his nose. Oh god, this is the cutest dog. Pet the dog. But where do I pet the dog? I need to give him those head rubs. He seems to love a good head rub. All smiles here. You definitely could have caught that. Guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over to us and takes a frisbee from me. Gingers. <laughs> no, frisbees are traditionally caught with your hands, not your face. You're traditionally not supposed to aim for people's heads. But I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> uh, I'm just messing with you. I'm Brian, by the way. I'm Joseph, and this is my daughter, Amanda. Look over at Amanda, only to find her sitting on the ground rubbing the dog's tummy. Huh. Hi. Oh. Your dog's cool. Ah, old Maxwell sure loves the attention. It's great to see another father and daughter out here on such a sunny day. Where's yours? Ryan gestures over to a grassy knoll where a young girl sits on a checkered blanket. She's reading a book bigger than her head. He puts it down and heads over to us. Hi. This is Daisy. She's reading the Brothers Karamazov. Her teacher tells me that she has the reading comprehension skills of a high schooler. How old is she? Uh. Ten. She's a precocious little youngster. Whoa! Whoa. Uh. My natural dad instinct kicks in. I must brag about my child's accomplishment. Oh no, what's happening? Oh crap. We're in a Pokemon battle. Come on, Daisy, tell him about yourself. Um, I... That's my girl! Amanda, get in there! Amanda, okay, okay. Oh dear. Well, she did do well in the photo competition, so yeah. So, and for your wallet, you have a tiny copy of a drawing of a cornucopia Amanda did in the first grade. Cute! It isn't very impressive, but Amanda genuinely appreciates the holding on to it. Yeah. I should have done that later. Daisy just started her weekly chess club at her elementary school computer lab. She's the president too, of course. Dang, my high school doesn't have a chess club or a computer lab. Dang it. We're winning! Um, 
a spelling bee photo. Fumbling through your phone's browser, you managed to pull up a photo of Amanda winning her 10th grade spelling bee. Wow, congratulations, Amanda. Daisy is getting prepped for her annual spelling bee right now. Hopefully this will be her third win in a row. Crap. Daisy sold enough candy bars this year to get the top prize, a canoe. We're taking it out next weekend. How's that even possible? I mean, I could barely get one of those sticky hand things. Extra powerful, you lose 20 HP. Oh no. This bastard's gonna win if I don't do something. Brag. Amanda here just recently won a local photography award. Ryan, wow, congratulations. Alright. Lucy actually just won a statewide poetry contest. Ugh. Wrinkled copy of your Amanda's last grade card out of your back pocket. Why am I even holding that? Dad? Awesome grades. Brian loses 25 HP. Great. You really carry that round everywhere? Ouch. Maybe that's kind of weird. You lose 5. I mentioned Daisy said her first word at 10 months. Daddy. Amanda's with potty. Still cute, but maybe this isn't the time to bring it up. Ah, oh, we're next to Last week, unprompted, Amanda helped an old woman with her grocery bags. It's extra powerful. Brian loses 28 HP. I might be able to win this. Daisy here has all of her adult teeth. Never had a cavity either. What? Amanda self-consciously pushes her lips together to hide her teeth. It's extra powerful. You lose 20 HP. <sighs> We've got left the band-aid. I don't know if that's gonna help, but. Use a band-aid from your pocket, take a knee, and start to apply it to Amanda's arm. No, what are you doing, Dad? Being a protective parent. Lose 10 HP. Crap. More darn all Daisy's good at, by the way, or math is amazing. One time I actually called her to double-check my numbers before I made a cup for a sport bean. I did that more than once, Dad. Doesn't that say more about him than it does about Daisy? Still. You lose 10 HP. Crap! really got a speed. Boy, it's been such a treat meeting you two. Or did you have to add insult to in injury by being such a gracious winner? I wonder if you can win that. So, I take it you guys are new to the neighborhood? We just moved in. Do you live around here? Huh. Yeah, we live in that cul de sac down next to the coffee shop. <laughs> what a coincidence. That's where we live too. Need to find a voice for Brian. Small well, world, yeah. Daisy and I are at a little, that little ranch-style house on the corner. I know that house. It's just like ours, but slightly bigger and better landscaped. Does this guy have to outdo me in everything? What a lovely place. <laughs> well, don't want to take any up any more, any more of your time. Really nice meeting you guys. You have to stop by at some point. Yeah, definitely. Bye. And Daisy walk up further into the park with Maxwell happily trotting along in show. <sighs> you get the feeling that he was trying to one-up us. Hmm. Trying and succeeding. Can't believe that kid's only ten. What was I even doing at her age? Um. I believe you had a bit of a thing for horses. Hey. Shame that didn't pan out. Got a major in comparative comparative horse studies. It's not too late to minor in horse creative writing. <laughs> Too close to the truth, Dad. Ugh. Let us never again speak of the fantastic adventures of Sore Horsington the Brave and Epic in Seven Parts by Amanda, Amanda Seed. <laughs> we laugh off the horse epic and walk around the park a bit more, enjoying the day. I guess we're gonna go take a nap. Well, the sunlight is making me real tired. I don't think I got enough sleep last night. You slept for 14 hours. Exactly. We're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps come up behind us. Joseph! Bro! Hey! I turn around and am greeted by a familiar face jogging up to us. Oh, isn't he cute? And look at the cute baby. Craig? Hmm? Bro! Bro! Oh. Holy wow, I haven't seen Craig in forever. Hmm. It's been too long, dude! Yeah, wow, you look great. Yes, he does. 
bro. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. <laughs> Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. <laughs> hello, and hello, cute baby. Hmm. Oh, thank you. Last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River gurgles happily. Are you babysitting? Ah. Nah, dude. River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to exams with bad hangovers, and the next we're both fathers. Where you been, man? Hmm. I was working out in California and just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding. Amanda and I moved, just moved to this side of town. How's Smashley Ashley doing? Oh, man. I mean, Ashley. Ashley is her name. Oh. She actually still goes by Smashley, and uh, we got divorced last year. Oh, dude. I'm so sorry. Hmm. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all copacetic. Twins? You have three kids? Hmm. Ain't life something, bro? Right? Keg Stan Craig is a father of three. Uh? Keg Stan Craig? Oh. Oh, <laughs> it was my old college nickname. I got it because he did a lot of keg stands. Hmm. The thing where you do a handstand, a keg, and then drink from the keg. Ah. Right. He was very good at it. Hmm. Ah, uh, bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog, and I really gotta keep my heart up my heart rate. Brought River along for, you know, resistance training. You jog daily? I jog yearly. On January 1st, when I promised myself I'm gonna jog daily for the rest of the year, but give up 30 after 30 minutes and just walk home. Hmm. Well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometime. <laughs> I don't know. Bro! Come on, it would be fun. We could grab breakfast afterwards, catch up. We could do a bro brunch like the good old days. Alright, sure, sounds great. Hmm? Great, let's get that going soon. I better get moving. Good to see you guys. Craig gives a little waves, puts his earbuds back in, and jogs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm reeling. Hmm? Why's that? Craig I knew was not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and especially himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. Amanda, he opened up a new jar of marinara sauce, and then he drank it, like it was a thing that normal people do. It was unholy. When I asked him what the hell he was doing, he said, and I quote, it's basically a smoothie, bro. Yeah. I mean, technically, he's not wrong. He jogs. He was jogging. Ah. He's like a totally different person. Anyway, we better get home. I'll have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. Amanda and I flop down to the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Ah. Too bad we're going to be putting my stuff right back into these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Hmm. Not dad. It's gonna be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just... You're my little girl. It's gonna be weird ha not having you around. Ah. I'll come visit. I'll text you every day, and I'll take lots of pictures. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. I promise? Ah. Of course. Are you gonna be okay by your lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. A dog. Hey. I'm gonna art school. I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's gonna take? <laughs> Medium-sized dog, handkerchief around the neck. I get to name it. That's what it'll cost for me to live, give up on my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. <laughs> Amanda laughs. Huh. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slides through the mail slot. Speaking of college. Ah. Amanda darts over the envelope and shuffles through them. She pulls one out and throws the rest back on the floor. Um, and that, I think, is where we will 
go ahead and save um, and stop the recording because this has been going on for a little while. I hope you have enjoyed this and I will um, be back hopefully not in too awfully long for the next portion of Dream Daddy. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.